Hi, I'm Bill Myers, and this is another one of my video tips of the week. In this week's video tip, I'm going to show you how to use Sony Movie Studio or Sony Vegas to build your own shoulder sets. Now, these are sets or templates that you can use over and over in your video productions. Now, to give you an idea of what we're going to do, we're going to start out with something like this, which is a presenter standing in front of a green screen. And we're going to end up with a set that looks like this. This presenter with a background, with a layered picture in a picture, and other elements on the screen. It's pretty easy to do once you see how to do it. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is go to Project and then click New and start a new project. And when you start a new project, you want to set the project properties. And for web, I generally set my project properties to HDV 720-30P, which is high definition widescreen. And once you set your project properties, you'll want to import the media for your project. Generally, the first thing you want to do is import the green screen. And that's what I've done here, the green screen background. Once you have the green screen on the screen, you want to apply the chroma key effect. The way you do that is you go to the clip itself. You click the event effects icon. That'll bring up your effects screen. And on your effects screen for chroma key, you want to choose chroma blur and chroma keyer. And then click OK. And on chroma blur, I generally push it up to about 95 for both horizontal and vertical. And then I click chroma keyer. And on the chroma keyer screen, you click the color bar that brings up the color chooser. You click the eyedropper and you choose the color of your chroma key background. And you notice the screen down here has gone black. One of the other things I do is always click show mask. And the idea is to use your high threshold and low threshold until you have the person almost all white. And that gives you a, a really nice sharp chroma key just like that. And then once we have that we turn the show mask off and then there's our person. The next thing we can do is put a background behind them. And I've imported a number of different backgrounds, and the first one we're going to start with is just a soft blue background. We'll drag it up, put it on the screen right behind them, extend the background out, and there he is there. Now, for most of your productions, you don't want your presenter to be standing right in the center of the screen, especially if you're doing over-the-shoulder shots. So what we're going to do is we're going to move him around. The way we do that is we select Event, Pan, and Crop, and we just move him over here. So it gives us room for our picture-in-picture -picture window. Now you're probably not going to have picture in picture on the screen all the time. You may have text or something else up here. So you'd always want to have at least one video track and maybe two video tracks above him so that you can put your picture in picture and text. So we're going to put our picture in picture element there. And I've got a picture of a Volkswagen that I like and I'm just going to use that as my picture in picture. So there's a Volkswagen right there. And I'll drag the length so it's on the screen full time. And you can see it completely overlays our presenter and we don't want that to happen. A couple of things we can do here. We can use our zoom key to zoom out the timeline. We can select the event pan and crop. On the event pan and crop window, we can just resize the window to make it small and then position them up in the corner where we want them. I don't do it that way. I prefer to do it a different way, and I'll show you how I do it. I have a plugin from New Blue Effects and Video Essentials 2 Picture in Picture, and I'll just drag it on top of that Volkswagen. And once I'm on top of the Volkswagen, I can Choose from a number of preset drop downs. Right now, I've selected Broadcast Standard, and with Broadcast Standard, I can just move that picture and picture wherever I want it on the screen. I can use controls to uh, add a border to that picture and picture. I can control the, the color of the border by selecting a border color. I can select the opacity of the border. I can control the width of the border, and I can even control the shadow if I want to put a shadow around that. So this is the new blue effects. It's really easy to create pictures and pictures and have a number of different picture and picture that you can choose from. You can have picture and picture with reflections. After you make the adjustments to the picture and picture, you can always create your own just by typing in a new name. I'm going to call this one frame reflection right shoulder and pressing the icon. And that way, anytime I want to bring up this picture and picture, I can. So basically, we've got three tracks here. We have the green screen track, we've got the overlay track, and we've got the background blue track. If we don't want the blue background, we can put a different background up. And let's do that now. Let's put a different background. What I've done is I've just turned the blue track off. And I'm going to right click and insert another video track there. So I'm going to pull up one of our background images here. It's this blue one, and I'm going to put it right there. And now that I have it there, I have to stretch it out so it fills the screen up completely all the way. And if we look at it here, you can see we have the different background. It looks pretty nice. And if I don't like that background, I can try a different background. Now, right now, for this video, I'm just using static backgrounds, but you can use uh, animated backgrounds. For YouTube, I would recommend using the static, non-moving backgrounds because it will give you higher resolution. So let's try a different background here. Just like before, what I'll do is I'll put that background up on the screen. I'll extend the length so it appears. 
and that's what it looks like. So once you've done this once, you can save this project, and the next time you want to create something like this, all you have to do is drop in the background that you want, drop in the green screen or the video clip, just right on top of the clip that's there, and drop in your picture-in-picture -picture elements wherever you want them. One other thing that I didn't mention here is that when picture-in-picture -picture comes on screen, it's just going to pop on the screen like that. You can use all your standard transitions on your picture-in-picture. -picture. So if you want it to fade in, you could do this, and it would come in as a fade. Or if you wanted to, you could use some of your fancy transitions where the things would come in like the 3D fly-in. We'll put that one up there, and you'll see what that looks like. So it's really easy to do. Again, to do this, you really only need three video tracks, and that's the green screen track, the background track, and a track for your picture-in-picture. -picture. I do recommend having another video track above this so that you can add text. For example, you might want to put text down here below the picture-in-picture, -picture, or you may want to have other things going on. Again, you can change the background anytime, and in fact, you can have multiple backgrounds on the screen at the same time. And you can do transitions from the backgrounds. So if a person is speaking and you want to change the tone of what's going on, you can change the background just like that. So anyway, I thought you might be interested in seeing how to create your own over-the-shoulder sets or templates that you can use in your projects over and over and over. I'm Bill Myers. This has been another one of my video tips of the week. You can find more like this at my website, www.bmyers.com.